We start with a point. Everybody and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called Entangled Awareness and OBEs. Now for the last several entries, we've been referencing back to questions that came up on my Theatre of the Mind podcast interview with Kelly Howell. This time, let's look at the question of what dimension am I in when I have an out-of-body experience? I'll be the first to admit that out-of-body experiences, OBEs, are one of the areas I haven't done a lot of reading on. The whole realm of lucid dreaming would seem to be related to this what dimension am I in question. In one of my early blog entries, Waveforms in the Ten Dimensions, I mentioned an interview I had done back then with Ben Q's Dreaming Life blog, which is dedicated to the exploration of lucid dreaming. So here's what it comes down to for me. With the approach to visualizing the dimensions I've created, what we basically have is a filing system, something that lets you catalog one kind of existence and its relation to another, and see how the multiplicity of parallel worlds, the multiplicity of different initial conditions universes, and the different kinds of information patterns that make up our awareness and our reality can be puzzled together. So what drawer in our filing system should we be placing OBEs and lucid dreaming? Last time, in Entangled Neurons, we looked at a proposed explanation for the creation of memory, and I tied that to the idea of our arrow of time being a line in the fourth dimension that is actually branching and twisting in the fifth. Any time a branch occurs, a memory is created. The mind-boggling idea that there are all these different versions of you or me being created with every splitting off that is occurring at every Planck frame, as per Everett's Many Worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, does need to be tempered somewhat. Right at this instant, I am part of a cloud of probabilistic me's that are all continuing on the same general path, the same branch. That's true at the quantum level, and it's true at the macro level. All of the tiny random occurrences and inconsequential decisions, uh, shall I put my hand here or there when I push that door open, tend to cancel each other out, to keep us moving in the same trajectory. It's only when our choice or chance or the actions of others create an event that really does split us onto a new fifth dimensional path that a long-term memory is created. Trying to keep a sense of me inside this probabilistic cloud is really a simple process then, right up until one of those major branches occurs. But what then? Let's say that my major branch that occurred today was that a gang of thugs beat me within an inch of my life. Would I be a different person as a result of that experience? I find it hard to believe that such an event wouldn't change me. Suppose that as a teenager I'd hung out with a different crowd and become addicted to heroin. Would I be a different person from the one I am now? Would I even be alive now these four decades later? Put in those terms, Everett's many worlds don't seem to be as unfathomable an idea. But people do seem to have more trouble imagining this process when it's described as them splitting off into all these different universes that quantum theory's universal wave function, as Everett called it, says really do exist. Remember this, while we're in our physical bodies, made out of 3D atoms and molecules, and being powered by thermodynamic chemical reactions that move us in a particular direction in the fourth dimension which we tend to call time, we can only observe one version of ourselves at a time. Even if our entangled awareness is connected to the other versions of our current self that are on the same trajectory, the same branch of our space-time tree. Which takes us to lucid dreaming and out-of-body experiences. The short movie that we're looking at here was published by New Scientist magazine a few months ago. It shows, as one example of many similar experiments that have been done, that it's surprisingly easy to convince people that they're not in their own bodies. But if we're talking about OBEs as actual experiences, then we are talking about part of the pattern that represents a person's awareness actually being able to separate itself from the physical body. Something that I'll insist is like those seven wonders of the quantum world we looked at last blog entry. These processes appear to be unimaginable from the linear, causally related frames that become our comparatively simple 4D line of time. For this reason, I'll continue to suggest that OBEs, lucid dreaming, and quantum spookiness and so on are all connected to extra dimensions. 
Now, what if your OBE is as mundane as simply rising above the bed and watching yourself sleep? There's no reason why this system of awareness that is part of your consciousness, or soul if you prefer, having used the fifth dimension to escape the confines of your physical body, can't then continue to observe the linear progression of time as it occurs in the fourth. But how much fun is that? Even just taking advantage of the ability to travel through walls, fly through the air, and quickly go visit a faraway friend can be imagined as simple manipulations of the fourth dimension through the fifth, creating, as Madeleine Lengel described so beautifully, wrinkles in time. In order to continue to viewing other aspects of the version of reality that we're currently occupying. But what if the OBE becomes more transcendent? What if a person feels themselves more connected to all living creatures? What if a person finds themselves in a world completely unlike the one we're in? As seemingly limitless as the fifth dimension may seem to be from our perspective, it's still more useful to think of it as our probability space. The many things both before and after that could potentially be causally connected to our now at any particular instant are part of that realm. So anything that appears to transcend those limitations that follows must be a representation of an awareness that is in the additional extra dimensions beyond the fifth. In My Stroke of Insight, when Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor talks about her unique experiences as a neuroscientist feeling a remarkable connectedness to the universe as a result of a burst blood vessel in the left analytical side of her brain, she's definitely talking about an awareness that moves beyond the fifth dimension. We talked before about shamanic rituals, psychedelics, empathy, entrainment, and meditation as being other examples of how people can move parts of their awareness beyond the limits of 4D space-time into the extra dimensions. Here are some past blogs where these topics have come up. Do shamans see other dimensions? The shaman. Creativity in the quantum universe. The comedian. Where are you? Life is but a dream. And David J. Brown and psychedelics. I would sum this all up very simply. The more you are able to do things that are impossible within our physical world of space-time, the less your OBE is embedded within the fourth dimension and below. The more connectedness you feel to others, to all living things, to all elements of our universe and beyond, the more you are moving towards the tenth dimension. But as the original tenth dimension animation implies, once you get to the ultimate enlightenment of considering all possibilities simultaneously in the tenth dimension, you are back in perfect symmetry, where everything cancels everything else out. Everything cancelled out means nothing is happening in the dimensions below. No vibrations. No change. As I like to say, that which ceases to change, ceases to exist. While there is a certain peacefulness in contemplating that big, beautiful, perfectly balanced zero for a while, isn't it much more interesting to be observing something rather than nothing? It's for that reason that the symmetry gets broken and a universe such as ours pops into existence. And within that universe, it's your job to figure out how to make the best use of what you've been given and to enjoy the journey. I'd like to close with my song about feeling connected to the parts of our awareness that are beyond the limits of space-time. The song is called I Remember Flying. And next entry will be called Changing Reality. My name is Rob Bryanson. Enjoy the journey. I remember flying Flying so high I push off from the ground And push into the sky I would leave this early bonds of gravity behind I remember flying from some other time I remember floating, ascending to the clouds, achieving elevation then descend into the ground I remember thinking It was natural as can be To be up there floating I remember moving In languid slow motion Like some giant creature Deep in the ocean Flying, diving, swooping, soaring Climbing, looping, laughing I 